Good evening. Welcome to the Festival of the Ascension of Our Lord. This is May 13th, 2021 here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And this service is being recorded for your watching pleasure at your leisure. I'm using tonight a version of a service that comes from something called the Wild Goose Worship Group. It's a British group, and they have this uh, resource called a We Worship Book. And I love some of the liturgies in here. So this is an evening liturgy of prayer and scripture uh, that I'm adapting for Ascension Evening. You'll notice many references in this liturgy to creation. It almost sounds like a liturgy for Earth Day. But that's deliberate on my part, connecting it to Ascension, because as you'll hear in the homily, I don't believe the Ascension is about Jesus leaving so much as about taking his proper role as sovereign over all the world. So uh, welcome again uh, to this service. Uh, we will be meeting again uh, in person and streaming and recorded on Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And so uh, you're welcome to join us in person. We've uh, found plenty of space within our worship space uh, to accommodate everyone safely. Our opening ac acclamation. Beneath the mists of time, before the world began, beyond our understanding, in the beginning, God. Fathering history, mothering creation, parenting Earth's people from the beginning, God. Expecting the right moment, preparing the right way, revealing the right person for each new beginning, God. We believe in one God, maker and mover of heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, God the maker, maker of color, sound, texture, quietness, and the restless beauty in living things, we bless you. God, God the maker, maker of granite and mustard seed, of gray cloud and starlight, of earthquake and heartbeat, we bless you. God, God the maker, maker of all that is unseen, of all that has been, of all that words could never capture, we bless you. God, God our maker, we the children of your love, the creatures of your kindness, the guardians of your creation, we bless you. We bless you for your making, your trusting, your loving, your never-ending goodness. Amen. The following prayer is appointed for this Ascension Day. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen now for the word of the Lord. Let our ears be open. The first lesson is recorded in the book of Acts in the first chapter. In the first book, O Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, Jesus said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Holy wisdom, holy word. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king over all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Our second scripture reading is recorded in the Paul's epistle to the Ephesians in the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Holy wisdom, holy word. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, beginning in the 24th chapter. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. As they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, as we are told in these lessons, ascends to the Father, ascends to the throne. And there are some, I think, and, and uh, for sometimes I have been one of those people, who it's, it feels almost as though this is like a departure, like a going away, like a leaving behind. And, and so are we then bereft of our Lord? Has he, has he taken leave of his people? I believe not at all. I believe the ascension has nothing to do with Jesus leaving, but everything to do with Jesus reclaiming or being restored to his proper place as the sovereign, as we read, over all people and over all nations. I would go so far as to say that Jesus is the proper sovereign, the proper monarch, not only over nations, but over all history and over all nature, and that that is his proper role, 
And while he walked among us, his humility was what was evident to us, his gentleness was evident to us, his grace. Now, as he is ascended to the throne, we see him retaining again this role as, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The reason I don't think that's a departure or a kind of uh, making him a kind of absentee Lord is that I, I would draw an analogy to the human kingdoms of our own time, where a lot of us are watching the English uh, royal house at this time. Uh, we, uh, we grieve with them in their loss, and we look forward with them to understand uh, what might happen when Queen Elizabeth decides uh, that it is her time to relinquish the throne and so on. When she became queen, and this would be true with any other human earthly kingdom, when she became monarch, she ascended some steps to a throne. She moved, literally moved upward, and was seated on a throne and received there then the crown and the scepter and all of the signs of authority. That did not remove her from the British people. It elevated her in their presence so that she could exercise her benevolent dominion, her caretaking role, as sovereign and monarch over those very people. In order for her to fulfill her, her role in its most full way, she needed to literally ascend up to be seen by everybody as the legitimate monarch of that realm. And from that position, from that position of authority, she is then able to exercise a benevolent dominion that as a person who was not in that position, she was not yet able to exercise. When Elizabeth either passes away herself or resigns the throne to her son, he also will ascend, literally walk upward to be seated on a high throne so that then he will exercise this kind of benevolent dominion over his people. That's what ascension looks like in regular human kingdoms. And I believe that's what is intended by these stories. I know that the imagery sounds a little bit like a going away, especially when we talk about waiting for Christ to return. But you know that can happen in human kingdoms too. Sometimes a king departs for a time for a particular reason and returns, but is never really absent from the hearts of the people and never relinquishes the authority uh, and, and the, the proper role as sovereign over those people. And so Jesus here has been lifted. Uh, there's the lifting of the resurrection, of course, but this lifting is, is a lifting to a throne space, to a place of sovereignty. Uh, yes, of course, over the church. Of course, over the church. But also over all creation, over every kingdom, every nation, every people, all human history and all the natural world. That is the proper role of Christ. In and through him all things exist, and over all things he is our proper Lord. And this ascension then is, is not so much I'm leaving as it is I am now being recognized for my full role over all things. During his life on earth, his small group of followers called him master, sometimes they called him rabbi, sometimes they called him lord, uh, but not yet even at that point understanding the fullness of what that title could mean. With the ascension, we really get to claim the fullness of the word lord in its biggest possible dimension. And the, the authority of the benevolent dominion of Christ over everything finally becomes more obvious and, and more publicly accessible. So the ascension becomes not a leaving, but a fulfillment of a promise that over all things, all people, all time, all places, you and me in our hearts, every day, every second of every day, every relationship, every decision, Jesus lords that benevolent monarchy over us his named people, the church, and the rest of creation as well, those who we seek yet to bear witness to so that they too might celebrate this position of his. He, he hasn't gone away. We know he dwells in us. He abides in us. And that message is clear in the Gospels all the time. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is, 
very much the process by which Christ sets up his own throne in his own way in our hearts, too. But the ascension is a way of declaring that this is not just a personal, psychological, spiritual experience for me or you or our fellow Christians here or there, but that this is now a, a declaration we make to the world, about the world, and about the Lord's role over the world. We stand under his benevolent authority, and the ascension is the way in which we declare that to the world. And when we talk about him returning again, it isn't again as though he were far off once upon a time and then suddenly appears again, but rather that the, the establishment of the kingdom is still now not quite complete. Again, to make an analogy with a human kingdom, sometimes a king has uh, parts of the territory that do not recognize the authority of the king, and the king has to figure out a way to establish that authority in, in the full uh, width of the boundaries of the realm. So it is here with Christ. Christ is the proper king over all creation and all history, but not all creation and all history yet recognizes that. And so the return of Christ has something to do with the fullness of that establishment and the completeness of the promise of God uh, being visible to all. In the meantime, here we live uh, cognizant of what has occurred in the life, death, and resurrection and ascension of Christ and cognizant of the blessing of the Spirit's presence which he has bestowed upon us so that we might stand in awe not of his absence but of his glory and his proper role in our lives and in all the world. It is for that reason that we continue to celebrate him and declare him as our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The service continues with a series of prayers. Let us pray for God's world, that its beauty may be preserved its variety retained, its integrity respected. Lord, hear us. That pollution and cruel exploitation might cease, so that rivers can clap their hands, waste places burst into flower, valleys laugh and sing, wildlife live in safety, and all as you intended. Lord, hear us that the children of tomorrow may not need a museum to show them the wonders of nature today. Lord, hear us. That the poorest nations of the world may not harvest their fields only to fill foreign tables. Lord, hear us. That Christ, who pointed to the birds, the flowers, the corn, the sunset, might not find their beauty lacking when he returns. Lord, hear us. Hear us, creator of all. Convert the hearts of those who ravage the earth and strengthen the resolve of those who respect it. And since the earth is your gift to us, prevent us from destroying by thoughtlessness that which is not ours to own. And Upon hearing the news in the last few days, I would add a prayer for all of those people who dwell in the land where Jesus walked, the people who are the citizens of the nation of Israel and the people who are the citizens of the nation of Palestine, all that they love, all that they care about, that a just peace might descend upon those people in that place and that both they and we might live to see a time of true justice and peace there. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bless us, O God the moon that is above us, the earth that is beneath us, the friends who are around us, your image deep within us, the rest which is before us this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>